not to be confused with Ernst Mayer, Ernst Mayer, Ernest Mayer or Ernest May. Ernst Walter Mayer was one of the 20th century's leading evolutionary biologists. He was also a renowned taxonomist, tropical explorer, ornithologist, and historian of science. His work contributed to the conceptual revolution that led to the modern evolutionary synthesis of Mendelian genetics, systematics, and Darwinian evolution, and to the development of the biological species concept. Although Charles Darwin and others posited that multiple species could evolve from a single common ancestor, the mechanism by which this occurred was not understood, creating the species problem. Ernst Meyer approached the problem with a new definition for species. In his book Systematics and the Origin of Species he wrote that a species is not just a group of morphologically similar individuals but a group that can breed only among themselves, excluding all others. When populations within a species become isolated by geography, feeding strategy, mate choice, or other means, they may start to differ from other populations through genetic drift and natural selection, and over time may evolve into new species. The most significant and rapid genetic reorganization occurs in extremely small populations that have been isolated. His theory of peripatric speciation, based on his work on birds, is still considered a leading mode of speciation, and was the theoretical underpinning for the theory of punctuated equilibrium, proposed by Niles Eldredge and Stephen Jay Gould. Mayer is sometimes credited with inventing modern philosophy of biology, particularly the part related to evolutionary biology which he distinguished from physics due to its introduction of history into science. Biography Mayer was the second son of L. N. Pusinelli and Dr. Otto Mayer. His father was a jurist but took an interest in natural history and took the children out on field trips. He learnt all the local birds in Würzburg from his elder brother Otto. He also had access to a natural history magazine for amateurs, Cosmos. His father died just before he was 13. The family then moved to Dresden and he studied at the Steyats Gymnasium in Dresden, Neustadt and completed his high school education there. In April 1922, while still in high school, he joined the newly founded Saxony Ornithologists Association. Here he met Rudolf Zimmermann, who became his ornithological mentor. In February 1923, Meyer passed his high school examination and his mother rewarded him with a pair of binoculars. On 23 March 1923 on the lakes of Moritzburg, the Frau on Teich, he spotted what he identified as a red-crested pocket. The species had not been seen in Saxony since 1845 and the local club argued about the identity. Raymond Schelcher of the club then suggested that Meyer visit his classmate Erwin Stressman on his way to Griswold, where Meyer was to begin his medical studies. After a tough interrogation, Stressman accepted and published the sighting as authentic. Stressman was very impressed and suggested that, between semesters, Meyer could work as a volunteer in the ornithological section of the museum. Meyer wrote about this event, It was as if someone had given me the key to heaven. He entered the University of Griswold in 1923 and, according to Meyer himself, took the medical curriculum but after only a year, he decided to leave medicine and enrolled at the Faculty of Biological Sciences. Meyer was endlessly interested in ornithology and chose Griswold at the Baltic for my studies for no other reason than that. It was situated in the ornithologically most interesting area, although he ostensibly planned to become a physician. He was first and foremost an ornithologist. During the first semester break Stressman gave him a test to identify tree creepers and Meyer was able to identify most of the specimens correctly. Stressman declared that Meyer was a born systematist. In 1925, Stressman suggested that he give up his medical studies. In fact he should leave the Faculty of Medicine and enroll into the Faculty of Biology and then join the Berlin Museum with the prospective bird-collecting trips to the tropics, on the condition that he completed his doctoral studies in 16 months. 
Meyer completed his doctorate in ornithology at the University of Berlin under Drive. Karl Zimmer, who was a full professor, on 24 June 1926 at the age of 21. On 1 July he accepted the position offered to him at the museum for a monthly salary of 330.54 Reichsmark. At the International Zoological Congress at Budapest in 1927, Meyer was introduced by Stressman to banker and naturalist Walter Rothschild, who asked him to undertake an expedition to New Guinea on behalf of himself and the American Museum of Natural History in New York. In New Guinea, Meyer collected several thousand bird skins and, in the process also named 38 new orchid species. During his stay in New Guinea, he was invited to accompany the Whitney South Seas expedition to the Solomon Islands. Also, while in New Guinea, he visited the Lutheran missionaries Otto Thiele and Christian Kaiser in the Finschafen district there. While in conversation with his hosts, he uncovered the discrepancies in Hermann Dietzner's popular book Four Years Among the Cannibals in German Guinea from 1914 to the Truce in which Detzner claimed to have seen the interior, discovered several species of flora and fauna, while remaining only steps ahead of the Australian patrols sent to capture him. He returned to Germany in 1930, and in 1931 he accepted a curatorial position at the American Museum of Natural History where he played the important role of brokering and acquiring the Walter Rothschild collection of bird skins, which was being sold in order to pay off a blackmailer. During his time at the museum he produced numerous publications on bird taxonomy, and in 1942 his first book Systematics and the Origin of Species, which completed the evolutionary synthesis started by Darwin. After Meyer was appointed at the American Museum of Natural History, he influenced American ornithological research by mentoring young birdwatchers. Meyer was surprised at the differences between American and German birding societies. He noted that the German society was far more scientific, far more interested in life histories and breeding bird species. As well as in reports on recent literature, Mayer organized a monthly seminar under the auspices of the Linnaean Society of New York. Under the influence of J.A., Mayer encouraged his Linnaean Society seminar participants to take up a specific research project of their own. Under May's influence one of them, Joseph Hickey, went on to write a guide to birdwatching. Hickey remembered later, Meyer was our age and invited on all our field trips. The heckling of this German foreigner was tremendous, but he gave tit for tat, and any modern picture of Dr. E. Meyer as a very formal person does not square with my memory of the 1930s. He held his own, a group of eight young bird watchers from the Bronx later became the Bronx County Bird Club, led by Ludlow Griscom. Everyone should have a problem, was the way one Bronx County Bird Club member recalled May's refrain. Meyer said of his own involvement with the local bird watchers, In those early years in New York when I was a stranger in a big city, it was the companionship and later friendship which I was offered in the Linnaean Society that was the most important thing in my life. Meyer also greatly influenced the American ornithologist Margaret Morse Nice. Mayer encouraged her to correspond with European ornithologists and helped her in her landmark study on song sparrows. Nice wrote to Joseph Grinnell in 1932, trying to get foreign literature reviewed in the Condor. Too many American ornithologists have despised the study of the living bird, the magazines and books that deal with the subject abound in careless statements, anthropomorphic interpretations, repetition of ancient errors, and sweeping conclusions from a pitiful array of facts. In Europe the study of the living bird is taken seriously. He found her a publisher, and her book was reviewed by Aldo Leopold, Joseph Grinnell, and Jean Delacour. Nice dedicated her book to my friend Ernst Meyer. Meyer joined the faculty of Harvard University in 1953, where he also served as director of the Museum of Comparative Zoology from 1961 to 1970. 
He retired in 1975 as Emeritus Professor of Zoology, showered with honors. Following his retirement, he went on to publish more than 200 articles. In a variety of journals, more than some reputable scientists publish in their entire careers, 14 of his 25 books were published after he was 65. Even as a centenarian, he continued to write books. On his 100th birthday, he was interviewed by Scientific American magazine. Maya died on 3 February 2005 in his retirement home in Bedford, Massachusetts after a short illness. His wife, Marguerite, died in 1990. He was survived by two daughters, five grandchildren and ten great-grandchildren. The awards that Meyer received include the National Medal of Science, the Balsam Prize, the Saturn Medal of the History of Science Society, the International Prize for Biology, the Loy and Alden Miller Research Award, and the Lewis Thomas Prize for Writing About Science. In 1939 he was elected a corresponding member of the Royal Australasian Ornithologists' Union. He was awarded the 1946 Leedy Award from the Academy of Natural Sciences of Philadelphia. He was awarded the Linnaean Society of London's prestigious Darwin Wallace Medal in 1958 and the Linnaean Society of New York's inaugural Eisenman Medal in 1983. For his work, Animal Species and Evolution, he was awarded the Daniel Gerard Elliott Medal from the National Academy of Sciences in 1967. Meyer was elected a foreign member of the Royal Society in 1988. In 1995 he received the Benjamin Franklin Medal for Distinguished Achievement in the Sciences of the American Philosophical Society. Meyer never won a Nobel Prize, but he noted that there is no prize for evolutionary biology and that Darwin would not have received one, either. Meyer did win a 1999 Crawford Prize. It honors basic research in fields that do not qualify for Nobel Prizes and is administered by the same organization as the Nobel Prize. Meyer was co-author of six global reviews of bird species new to science. Meyer said he was an atheist towards the idea of a personal god because there is nothing that supports it, May's ideas. As a traditionally trained biologist, Meyer was often highly critical of early mathematical approaches to evolution such as those of J.B.S. Haldane, famously calling such approaches beanbag genetics, in 1959. He maintained that factors such as reproductive isolation had to be taken into account. In a similar fashion, Meyer was also quite critical of molecular evolutionary studies such as those of Carl Rosa. Current molecular studies in evolution and speciation indicate that although allopatric speciation is the norm, there are numerous cases of sympatric speciation in groups with greater mobility. The precise mechanisms of sympatric speciation, however, are usually a form of microallopatry enabled by variations in niche occupancy among individuals within a population. In many of his writings, Meyer rejected reductionism in evolutionary biology, arguing that evolutionary pressures act on the whole organism, not on single genes, and that genes can have different effects depending on the other genes present. He advocated a study of the whole genome rather than of isolated genes only. After articulating the biological species concept in 1942, Mayer played a central role in the species problem debate over what was the best species concept. He staunchly defended the biological species concept against the many definitions of species that others proposed. Meyer was an outspoken defender of the scientific method, and one known to sharply critique science on the edge. As a notable example, in 1995, he criticized the search for extraterrestrial intelligences conducted by fellow Harvard professor Paul Horowitz as being a waste of university and student resources for its inability to address and answer a scientific question. Over 60 eminent scientists led by Carl Sagan rebutted the criticism. Mayer rejected the idea of a gene-centered view of evolution and starkly but politely criticized Richard Dawkins' ideas. 
The funny thing is if in England, you ask a man in the street who the greatest living Darwinian is, he will say Richard Dawkins. And indeed, Dawkins has done a marvellous job of popularising Darwinism. But Dawkins' a basic theory of the gene being the object of evolution is totally non-Darwinian. I would not call him the greatest Darwinian. Ernst Mayer, Edgemeyer insisted that it is the entire genome, rather than individual genes that should be considered as the target of selection. The idea that a few people have about the gene being the target of selection is completely impractical, a gene is never visible to natural selection, and in the genotype, it is always in the context with other genes, and the interaction with those other genes make a particular gene either more favorable or less favorable. In fact, Dobzhansky, for instance, worked quite a bit on so-called lethal chromosomes which are highly successful in one combination and lethal in another. Therefore people like Dawkins in England who still think the gene is the target of selection are evidently wrong. In the 30s and 40s, it was widely accepted that genes were the target of selection, because that was the only way they could be made accessible to mathematics, but now we know that it is really the whole genotype of the individual, not the gene. Except for that slight revision, the basic Darwinian theory hasn't changed in the last 50 years.